Hello, and we have some big, big news today coming out of Avatar The Last Airbender's live adaptation for Netflix. So looking into this, what we can see is that the Avatar's live action, The Last Airbender, has a massive budget. Like, I read through this and I just could not believe the amount of money they're spending on it. Now, if you're like myself and you like the Avatar show, and you are also a big fan. Like I know I grew up watching this. Like I was a I was a kid when this came out. And then obviously as I got older, Cora came out, I watched all that. And I actually only finished both my rewatches uh I think six months ago. So yeah, like they're great, great show. Now, before we get into this, just a little disclosure. Um the budget is high for this show, but I do not have hopes for it, and I will get into that later on in the video after we go through the budget of this show. So Netflix's live action remake of Avatar, The Last Airbender, will have one of TV's highest budgets of all time, with millions invested in every episode. Netflix's upcoming live action Avatar, The Last Airbender, will be quite a spectacle as the, as the first season is reported to have a massive budget. The series was described as having the highest TV budgets of all time, with a price tag of 15 million per episode 15 million that is a staggering amount of money like there's eight episodes in this series uh, for the first season and they're spending 15 million so according to avatar news while iro actor paul sung hong lee recently described the live action adaptation as a hundred million dollar show a source on the production claimed it's even bigger more than 120 million for the eight for the eight episodes for a season 120 million on the first season that is a staggering staggering amount of money Um, i'm hoping it's going to be good but as i said earlier on i don't have high hopes i will get into that later on but yeah let's just have a look to see why it is costing 15 million per episode so one reason for the substantial budget is that the use of brand new custom made virtual production volume the largest of its kind this cutting edge technology in north america the website slates so recently this technology has been used on hefty productions like disney's the mandalorian netflix's virtual set for avatar is said to rival disney's the first production studio to utilize the new technology like i will admit the effects on the mandalorian were quite good they were clean they were crisp so if they are using the similar type of effects on Avatar The Last Airbender uh, live action remake, the, the effects may be good. Now, whether the story is remains to be seen. So Disney has been hailed as a pioneer in the emerging field of virtual production technology. In the addition to the new Avatar, the Mandalorian's cutting edge technology is being incorporated into projects like Ant-Man and the Wasp, uh, Quantumania, uh, Jeff Loveless, a writer on Quantumania, said, I don't know if you watch The Mandalorian or any of that stuff. D there's this new technology called The Volume, which is basically a living green screen. You can actually put up the backgrounds and the cool visual effects that you want in real time, much better for the actors, and then they'll do digital stuff later to make it look better. If The Mandalorian's visual effects are any indication, Netflix's avatar should be a dazzling display of techno technological innovation. The show is being filmed on a 23,000 square foot immersive studio stage created by Pixelmundo Virtual Productions. Right, so going on this, it's a living green screen essentially. So does this mean then that there will be no um, like action action sets out in the actual world so it's just going to be all filmed within a studio there'll be no actual real world settings uh, that's what i'm taking from this is this what you're taking let me know down in the comments below what you think like do you think this is the right way to go about filling this show considering a lot of the show um was around nature and like harmonizing with the world to be filming the show in a closed off studio um, I don't know how I feel about that. Uh, I am a big fan of uh, real world sets, like actually out in the open. So yeah, let me know down in the comments what you think of it being in a closed studio. So 
the upcoming live action adaptation still does not have a release date. I don't think it will for a while. Um, though, though star Paul Sung Hung Lee revealed that the first season of Avatar would consist of eight hour long episodes. So what I think they're going for there, if they are following book one, um, they will most likely be cutting out any of the filler episodes, which I think gave the characters depth. But if they're going for eight hour long episodes and going to be doing all of book one, most likely they're just going to be hitting the, the top points on that. The series is currently in its fourth month of filming and production is expected to last six months. Right, so that's kind of covering the technology basis of what is going into this show. Now, as I said, I don't have massive hopes for this. I did when it first got announced, and that was because Michael and Brian were involved in the show. So they are the creators of Avatar. They were meant to have creative control over this. And essentially, they released a letter um, last year, or so two years ago. Jesus, two years ago, I believe. Um, yeah, where they basically said the duo has called their time with the studio a negative and unsupporting environment. So what I believe is happening there is that basically they were trying to get creative control and the Netflix executives uh, were cutting them off. But though the fathers of Avatar have left this one, Netflix takes on the series in a promising hands. So, yeah, my hopes for this show instantly got dashed as soon as this letter got released. So I don't know how it's going to go with uh, Michael and Brian not involved with the show. I was quite disappointed uh, when I found out that they left, not not on their part, on Netflix's part, with how they were treated, as I said, a negative and unsupportive environment like that is no way to work and these guys created avatar like they created a brilliant brilliant story so for them not to be involved with this is quite upsetting and my hopes for this show instantly got cut in half i will still watch it as i said i am a massive uh, avatar the last airbender and avatar legends of korra fan so i will see what it's like and i will review it but as I said, my hopes are nowhere near as high as they were when it first got announced. But let me know down in the comments what you think. Are you looking forward to this show? How do you think this show will go? Do you think it will be good? Let me know down in the comments below. I would love to hear your thoughts on that. If you want to hear more movie and TV news, please consider hitting the subscribe button as it does help the channel out immensely. I'll catch you on the next one. Bye bye.